Right. Um, yeah, my number two on today, we'll see. Um, um, I mean, I was going to see if anybody wanted to talk about the test um, that we have this week, remind about that, have a couple of announcements. Um, maybe I'll go back over the um, previous assignment a bit. So that did get returned uh, for people. Um, and there's an example solution on there. Um, one thing I was going to kind of uh, announce, um, um, I did post this just yesterday, um, uh, opportunity for some extra credit. We're looking to, to recruit some participants for um, some studies that we're doing here. Um, there's a timeline on this, but I'm willing to give up to uh, like, like half of the programming assignment on that. So, you know, so um, if somebody has a missing program assignment that's worth um, um, half on the missing one, or if you've done all the program assignments, I mean, that is like a, um, a letter grade bump over all five of them, you know, so um, probably worth doing. Um, I think all you have to do is go to this link here uh, and sign up, but uh, you do have to get in sometime this week or next week uh, to do that. And, and I, I will just add the extra credit on that for anybody that participates in that um, onto the onto one of the programming assignments or spread it over a couple of them. So, um, so yeah, there, there's that. Um, I can have. I'll, I'm supposed to offer an alternative for that. So an, uh, an alternative would be an extra program assignment. So if anybody. Uh, once that, you have to email me about that. So, um, but uh, but that that will be basically kind of similar to the existing program assignments, you know. So, um, the experiment would be a, a lot less time. Probably take about forty five minutes or so, usually no more. So. Um, the other thing is, yeah, I mean we're coming up to um, just a half week next week, so. Um, I might not meet on Tuesday ahead of time. The other thing is that I went ahead and um, but I, we still do need to have, um, you know, so, so we've got the half week um, and then actually one week of classes after that. And then uh, actually the, the, the week after that is finals week. So, so we've really only got two more full weeks after this one. But um, basically the schedule is um, um, we're still doing a programming assignment and a problem set for the last unit and the, the chapters nine and 10 for the textbook. After we come back from break, um, I moved the um, um, due date for the program for, for the problem set to actually after Thanksgiving. Um, so, um, so, so, I mean, but there is still both of those, but they're both gonna be due the week after Thanksgiving. So that Friday, um, um, I'll be looking for the last problem set and the fifth program assignment as well. And then the fifth test will be during the uh, the week when we're having uh, set aside for finals week. So, so we'll, we'll use that. Um, so it's not a final test, it's just the, the, our fifth test, you know, so it's not cumulative, but um, we'll have that um, fifth test scheduled for that, uh, that uh, last week uh, 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 during finals. So it'll, it'll be the, the same thing. So I have, have it open on Thursday and Friday. Um, you can take it uh, whenever is most convenient uh, for you. So. Um, all right, through that. Um, so I don't know if, if um, I have a lot then to say about the program assignment for, um, um, I'll just go over maybe one or two quickly, the, the most common kind of bugs that people were making on the clock page replacement. I, I think almost everybody that, that submitted something 
was getting past the first tasks to, or, to add the methods to the paging system. So maybe I won't talk about that, but um, um, uh, just go back and look at the clock page replacement. So, so for the test for this week, I mean, you know, um, I mean, hopefully everybody did the program assignment. Um, you, you should probably know how to do a clock page replacement by hand. I think there is a question where you have to do a uh, clock page replacement um, on this fourth test here as well as um, like a FIFO or a optimal or things like that. So make sure you can do all those. Um, um, I'll bring up the review materials uh, a bit um, and talk about those. But um, um, let me just bring up uh, the programming assignment real quick here. Um, so, there were one or two people that weren't handling the, the buffer quite right. Um, so the most common problem, I think, was uh, not wrapping the buffer in the correct place. You know, so it's a kind of a common thing whenever you're kind of having to implement circular buffers here to um, to have some problems with that so, um, yeah, this is still not up here let's see if you know if i'm problems with my, my dev box here be slow coming up for some reason. Actually, yeah, I don't really need the dev box. Let's uh, let me just bring it up in an editor and we'll talk about it. So, um, in the example solution, if we can look at the uh, actually the clock. Bigger here. I kind of you never remember. Um, all right, so most people were using either an array of Booleans or an array of integers. Both of those should have worked uh, pretty much in the same way. Some people, you know, obviously still were um, um, not too used to allocating memory dynamically um, and um, um, managing it. So in this case, um, so I had one or two people actually hard code like a size in here, which is not really going to work um, in this simulation, you know, so, so doing something like, say, having use bits of a size of five, right? So, you know, that'll mostly work except um, if you create simulations where memory where you use a bigger memory size of course um, you're going to start crashing so if i use a, a more than you know six or more frames of memory this will have problems because you'll be end up accessing beyond the end of the array so i had at least one or two people doing something like that so you really need to, to dynamically allocate this uh which means you should have a pointer and somewhere you have to call new um so the the, the most 
likely place to do that is in the constructor or um, in the reset scheme. So for the paging system, um, it was done in the reset scheme for the memory. Um, so uh, in the example that I posted, we do the same, a similar kind of thing here. Um, we, um, we access what the current memory size is from the uh, paging system. So we've got a, a pointer to the, the paging system, the sys pointer. Um, and from that, that allows us to figure out exactly how much memory we should allocate for our use bits here. Um, um, I don't know, this is kind of a general comment uh, about kind of people's coding. I mean, try and use useful, use meaningful names for variables and things. So had um, a couple of groups or students uh, going back to using like single letter variables, which makes it very hard to, you know, read your code if you, if you don't have names that kind of communicate the intention of how the variable is going to be used, that kind of thing. Um, um, in this case, I mean, there's, there's ways you could have handled this, but uh, you probably had to initialize the use bits to be true in order to um, take into account that the initial page placements. Um, so you're, uh, the, the, the way the interface is set up, you're not given um, any um, um, callback for the initial page placements, but, but when the, the pages are first loaded into memory, they should have the use bits set to one. So it makes sense to just simply initialize the use bits to one or true um, um, on the implementation of the clock paging, the, the, the clock page replacement scheme. So that way, you know, it, it'll uh, be true for the initial page placements, um, which is kind of where you need them to be. Um, um, and then the other thing that I was saying, so, you know, for some reason, I mean, people were, there were a few people that had some bugs on the, um, uh, the circular buffer for the um, um, access in the use bits, right? So, again, this should have been similar to how it was done um, in various places on the paging system, if, if you looked at that as examples. So you know, if you look at the paging system implementation of, let's say, do page placements. Um, Or oh, well, so yeah, the do page placements, um, we just have to ask in for an empty frame. So, um, um, or no, I meant, yeah, the FIFO. So if you looked at the FIFO's implementation of, of um, its make replacement decision, um, you know, we have to do something similar, although it's, it's of course um, simpler in this case, but you have to do something where you're incrementing the pointer, but then wrapping it around, right? So uh, either a modulus or an explicit um, um, if statement um, here. So, um, implement that for the, the clock paging. Um, you have to do something where you search starting from the current frame pointer. Um, so, so this is an example of something that would work. So basically you need to keep searching while the use bit for the frame pointer is true because whenever it's true, that means you wanna skip over that page and go to the next one. You, you wanna find the first page um, starting at wherever the frame pointer is right now, whose use bit is false, right? For, for the clock page replay. Right. And, and hopefully everybody understands this because again, you know, you, you'll probably see um, a clock page replacement has to do that on the test here on Thursday, Friday this week. Um, so while that's true, so while, while the use bit is, is one or while the use bit is true, 
you want to set it to false and then you need to go to the next frame pointer. Okay. So another mistake that some people that at least one person or group made was to not start at the frame pointer, but to start at frame zero. Right. So, but that's, that's incorrect for the clock page replacement. Like for FIFO, you really need to start scanning from the last place where you left off when, when you do this or else you're not treating the different frames uh, fairly. So, you know, if you, if you always start from zero, you're going to be more likely to be kicking out the, the frames um, at the top of memory um, rather than finding ones that have been approximately in there for a long time. So that, that's what the use bit approximates for the, the clock algorithm is, is it gives a single bit of information about whether a page has been used recently or not. So. Um, so yeah, the, the, the problem, the other problem was for some reason, um, some people were doing the um, wrap of the buffer at a different location. So using like an if statement, but doing that at the top and then incrementing the pointer at the bottom. And, and the problem with that is that the, you really should have the, um, the, the check and the, uh, the, the wrap when you're doing a circular buffer immediately after when you increment the value because if you have them separated at all um so in that case the bug was because they had it separated so it, it was possible that the frame pointer was incremented but the check wasn't done since the check was being done kind of at the top of their loop when they were doing this here for this particular case so um in certain conditions you could fail to wrap it around and end up with a frame pointer um, that was passed in the memory so. Um, so the, you know, the ultimately you want to end up with after you've done your search, you need to have be at a location so that the frame pointer is actually pointing to the next frame whose, whose use bit is zero to the first frame whose use bit was zero that was found. Right, so that, that's kind of how the clock works, um, which this implementation should do, assuming it's all correct, bug free here. And that's the frame you want to replace. Uh, so you want to return that frame, but you know you do have to do an additional kind of thing. You need to increment, like, like was done for FIFO in the FIFO example. You really need to be returning the frame that, that um, it's currently pointing to, but you need to increment it so that the next time when you need, need to make a replacement decision, you start at the place after the frame that you're currently replacing. So we do that by kind of remembering where the frame pointer is uh, and then doing our increment. Um, so. um, although this was another one that at least somebody made um, a bug on. So that, that page is being replaced uh, is going to be coming in. It's use bit needs to be set to one. So somewhere you need to guarantee that, that the use bit is one for that frame that's about to be replaced. So again, a logical place to do that is right here. So you know that you're about to have a new page come in to that frame that's to be replaced. Um, so the use bit should be zero. So, so you know that the use bit is zero because you just found the frame whose use bit was zero. You need to set it back to one um, in anticipation of the page replacement that's about to be done here. Um, all right, so yeah, I mean, those were the, the, the most common observations I had for people um, making some errors. Um, there, was, there was one other group or, or student that um, had some formatting issues on the get scheme status, which uh, meant that their algorithm was working, but some of the, but the system test for clock would be failing if, if um, you know, if you misspelled something or something like that, just because you don't have an exact match between the output expected by the system test and the um, output that was being generated by your code. So I just took off a few points for that, I think, so. Um, uh, 
All right, so unless there's some questions about the assignment, I think we'll go ahead and wrap that up then. Um, but, uh, but yeah, like I said, those are the main things that I noticed from grading this most recent one here. So, um, all right, and then like I said, it might be kind of a bit short today, but um, uh, let's see if, um, um, as usual, there are you know some materials to review as you're looking for the um, um, uh, to doing the test uh, for at the end of the week here. Um, Of course, you know this. This unit is about memory management um, and virtual memory. Um, our assignment, you know, uh, both the problem set and the um, uh, program assignment, we're, are con we're concentrating on the page replacement algorithms, which is only one kind of part of, of memory management and, and paging system, right? So you know, so don't um, don't neglect, you know. You know, make sure that you understand things about virtual memory and stuff. So, uh, kind of real quickly, um, the um, chapter seven talked initially about uh, a couple of um, um, older, you know, some 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 of the original. Um, memory management um, um, schemes that operating systems used. So those were the um, um, things that, that led up to what we now call um, you know, paging or segmentation, right? So, you know, you should understand the, those previous ones, but um, 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 kind of the, the you know, a big take takeaway from chapter seven, though, is is you know that the, there really is sort of two fundamental approaches for memory management. So either you you can break up memory into chunks that are all the same size. That's really what paging is, right? So so you just specify what the page size is, and then both memory and virtual memory, um, uh, everything is divided up into. Uh, page is all that same size. And so then whenever you need to load or unload stuff, you're going to be loading uh, uh, chunks of that fundamental page size, right? Um, um, so that was what was known as like the fixed partitioning. Uh, the, so, so there was fixed partitioning and dynamic partitioning um, what was talked about as kind of as predecessor mechanisms. So fixed partitioning is kind of like simple paging. Um, that we talked about. Dynamic partitioning uh, led to segmentation. So segmentation is still used in operating systems, um, not as much as paging, but the segmentation is the idea is if, if you have a um, request to allocate memory, uh, you get the size that's needed and you allocate uh, a chunk exactly for the size that's needed, right? So in that case, you're gonna have um, segments what are called segments in memory that are of different sizes um, so that leads to different issues. So, so then you end up with, say, uh, different holes in memory that can be of different sizes. Um, and then, um, so that makes the um, decision about where to allocate memory for a request more important than in paging. So in paging, since all the, the chunks are of the same size, which, which one you allocate doesn't really make a difference. You just allocate one that's free or you pick one that you need to kick out um, so they can bring in a new one. So, so for segmentation, th this, was, this was part of the, 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 the question for our problem set. So the first question was really about um, um, dynamic segmentation where you were allocating um, um, I, I, dynamic partitioning where you were allocating memory of different sizes, right? And, and you could have holes of different sizes and then you'd have to have a free block list um, so, and you'd have to search that in different ways and, and when you make a decision about which one you want to use to satisfy a memory request, so. Um, oh. 
So anyway, yeah, I mean, for capital time, I, I do think it's kind of most important to understand what we mean by simple segmentation and, and why that's basically like dynamic partitioning and how dynamic partitioning originally led to what we would call uh, a segmentation approach to memory management um, for modern operating systems. Um, and, and likewise, you know, uh, what was initially called fixed partitioning um, in, in operating systems led to what we would call uh, paging memory management or, or a simple paging. Okay? And then moving on, so, so the, 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 the big kind of takeaway between that and chapter eight, where we talk about virtual memory, so, so simple paging uh, was expanded to the concept of um, virtual uh, memory, okay? So um, just to kind of cut the chase here, the, the thing that you should have understood, and we talked about this in the, uh, the, the lecture materials, lecture videos, I believe that we had uh, for this unit here. Um, but the big breakthrough idea for virtual memory is, so in originally, originally for simple paging systems, um, pages were thought of as being big enough to hold like a whole program, right? So, so you'd have one, one page for each pro process that was running in the operating system. And that was kind of what the original, the way that originally the simple paging worked. But, um, and, and that, that's what for fixed partitioning um, is about. So one of the breakthroughs, one of the two key breakthroughs in virtual memory is to, to switch your thinking a bit. So think of pages, the typical page size as being much smaller than the typical process. And in that case, you're gonna break the process up into small pieces of, of page size, you know, um, right? So when you do that, that, that allows you to do things like, um, instead of having to have the process all in one page, uh, all in one location of memory, I can break my process up into small pages. And then I can uh, potentially allocate um, pages at different locations in memory, so non-contiguously. So that, that greatly um, increases the flexibility of the memory management system if you do that. So you no longer have to have the process all at one location in memory. You can actually break it up into small pieces and you can um, scatter it across memory wherever you have available um, uh, pages um, uh, uh, currently not in use that you can you know, allocate for the process to use, right? So that, that, that was a kind of a big breakthrough idea. Um, and the other thing is once you start doing that, you realize that uh, if I, if I want to run a process uh, and I break it up into small pages, I don't necessarily have to have all of the pages for that process in memory right now. I really only need the, the page that has the, the current instruction that I want to execute and maybe also the page that has the data that that instruction is referring to. So I might need as little as one or two pages of a process that could have potentially hundreds or thousands um, of pages that are part of the process. Um, so when you do that, that means that, that um, I, for, for any process that's running, I might only have a small subset of its pages currently in memory. So that means that I could potentially have many, many more processes now because all the processes, instead of having to have all of their pages loaded whenever we're running the process, might only have a small part of the process um, in, you know, a couple of pages that are currently being used by that process, right? So that's important. That has important implications for um, 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 uh, utilization of the processor and utilization of system resources. So now I can potentially have many, many more processes um, that are being run, you know, since I don't have to have all of the process in memory, uh, which means that at any given time, I'm I'm guaranteed I'm much more likely to have one or a couple of processes that are ready to run right now, right? So, so I don't have lots of cases where the CPU is idle because I've got lots of processes in memory um, and it's likely that one or many of them or a couple of them at least are ready to run right now. So I can go ahead and schedule it. So the process doesn't have to, the, the CPU doesn't have to be idle because all processes are blocked waiting on some IO to complete or something like that. So. Um, so again, I mean, th these are kind of the stuff that 
you know, if you read through chapter eight and went through the lectures, I mean, you should have could have kind of understood about virtual memory. You know, virtual memory is a big deal. It, it was, a, it was um, on, on its face, it doesn't look like virtual memory uh, necessarily should work or, or might work, you know, because there's questions about um, um, if you're doing this, because basically if you don't have all the process loaded into memory, that means that you've got some of the process out on secondary storage on disk, and then you do basically demand paging. So if I do reference something that's not currently in memory, I'm gonna have to fetch and load that page from disk to memory before I can resolve the reference. And that, that's how virtual memory works. That's, that's known as a page fault when the um, uh, uh, page that you need data on isn't currently in memory. Um, and so initially people thought the virtual memory might not work at all because the overhead uh, of, of doing that paging um, would um, um, outweigh any performance benefits that you got from being able to have multiple page, you know, multiple more processes in system running at a given time. Yeah. But it turns out that, that um, virtual memory does work to fine uh, because of the, the um, principle of locality. Once you do have a page in, uh, it's, it's going to be the case that, that the, the data and the instructions you need um, are, are going to be on that page that was loaded, at least for, um, for quite a bit of time, right? So, you know, um, what it comes down to then is, is you don't, uh, you know, the, the overhead of doing lots of page faults and loading things doesn't um, swap out the benefits of, of loading in the page um, or the, the set of pages that's needed. Um, and then doing calculations with them. So, so yeah, I mean, virtual memory, you know, a, a big kind of a breakthrough in, in operating systems and the way they work for general purpose operating systems. So, so all general purpose operating systems, you know, for your laptops, you know, your, your Windows and, and your Linux uh, on your servers make heavy use of virtual memory for uh, memory management. So it's one of the fundamental things, right? I mean, uh, it is complex, so you know you, you wouldn't implement virtual memory for simple embedded operating systems. So you won't find it on you know like an operating system on your embedded chip um, that's running for you know doing stuff on your car or microwave or something like that. It'll just use some sort of simple uh, memory management. But for most general purpose operating systems, um, you know the the whole that they rely on, on virtual memory um, to efficiently manage um, you know, uh, the, the memory of the system. Because memory is a very important resource, right? So it's second most important behind the CPU itself that you manage it efficiently. So. Um, So yeah, for that, I mean, that, that was kind of all, you know, for, when reviewing for the test, make certain you understand what we mean by a page table and how that works for virtual memory. So every process has a separate page table um, and that's how what, what is used in order to determine whether the page that that process is referring to is currently in memory or it's not, it's in secondary storage, in which case there's a page fault and you need to select a frame in memory to load that page. So that gets to the page replacement decisions that was part that was, you know, what our program assignment was all about was really that portion of virtual memory, the making replacement decisions, right? Um, but, you know, you need to have that information. You need to have one page table for every process, right? So it's going to be unique because every process has its own idea of a, of a virtual memory space, right? So the, the page table is a mapping from the pot processes virtual memory space to actual physical memory, physical frames where the pages are, or an indicate. And so there's another, there's a bit in the page table that indicates whether the page is valid or not. If it's valid, that means that that page is currently loaded in some frame in memory. So you can directly resolve the reference. And if the page is invalid, that means it's a page fault and it needs to be loaded into a frame before you can continue executing the program um, from that reference that was made. Um, and there's lots of, of, of then other things. Um, 
um, you know, besides page replacement, there, there's there's um, uh, uh, lots of other decisions that are being made um, by the operating system to manage memory. Textbook talks about those. I don't emphasize those as much as page placement. Page placement is, is a big one for the performance of the memory management system. But there's things like resident set management. Um, um, there's initial page placement decision, which for paging systems is usually pretty trivial. Resident set management has to do with, um, um, you know, if I have multiple processes and they each have their own page table, you might want to do things to, to, to uh, limit so how many frames do I allow this process to have of physical memory versus this process? Do they all have the same number of frames, which is fixed? Um, or do I just allow a process to get as many frames as it needs, right? Um, and, and, and in that case, um, so we don't allocate frames on a per process basis, but we just allow whenever um, a page fault occurs that we select any particular frame, which could cause a page for a different process to be removed from memory, right? So those are kind of two extremes for uh, what's known as resident set management that our textbook talked about there. Um, um, and there were some other um, kinds of things. So, um, in chap the chapter eight talked about in relationship to virtual memory and memory management. Um, yeah, and then beside, besides that, I mean, you know, right, I've already mentioned, but you know, make certain that you're proficient that you can do an LRU um, or a FIFO or a CLI, that you know what those mean, you can do those and optimal, don't forget optimal, I should put optimal on there. Um, and have some idea about, you know, the performance of these. So um, there's probably some questions about that, you know, so in general, I mean, the takeaway, the big takeaway from chapter eight is that of the page replacement policies that are discussed, uh, I mean, of course, optimal gives the optimal performance, but it's impractical for real systems because it really requires you to be able to see into the future, which you normally can't do. So you can use optimal for simulations, but you can't really use that in real operating systems. So among the policies that you can actually implement, like FIFO, LRU, and CLOCK, FIFO is simplest, but it has the worst performance. Um, LRU um, is not as... Is, is, is more complex, so it has more overhead. You essentially have to be able to keep something like a timestamp or, or be able to figure out which which page was used furthest back um, in history in order to make the decision about that page be the one that's kicked out and replaced. Right? Um, and, and that does have significant overhead, but that gives the best performance in terms of minimizing the page faults, right? And then clock is really a compromise. It, it, it's it's in between the two. As, as as you know, if you did the program assignment, um, as you kind of saw, I mean, it's really a FIFO. Uh, it's really um, so you keep a frame pointer that works kind of like FIFO, but um, you don't just kick out the, the the next page in a first in first out uh, manner. Um, you use the use bit to uh, determine a page that hasn't been used as recently as others, right? Um, and kind of as an extension of this, I mean, you could, instead of using a single use bit, you could, for example, use two bits. Um, and then you, you search for a, a, um, a page whose both use bits are zero, but then you start it when you initially load it with both bits as one. And then every time you um, flip the bit, you flip it down, right? So if, if you find a page, whose both use bits are one, that would be a three in decimal. So you, you flip it to become two, um, or then if it's two, you flip it to become one, or if it's one, you flip it to become zero. So in that way, using two bits, you kind of have four levels of how recently the page has been used, right? So that, that's, that's a common kind of modification to use more than one use bit um, to make your decision, right? If you use enough use bits, of course, it becomes like a timestamp. So it becomes 
basically, you know, the more use bits you use, the closer you would get to least recently used performance um, for a clock. From how to, um, oh, and, and another one, and you know, this is kind of a, a special hint here because I think that this is a question on the, the test floor. Another common modification of clock is to use the use bit, but also to use the bit that indicates whether the page has been modified or not. Because if you select a page who's, that's been modified, you first have to write that page out before you can uh, replace it, read in the next page. But if you can find a page that hadn't been used recently and also that's not modified, whose modified bit is zero, that means you don't have to take the time to write it back out because it, nothing has changed on that page. So those, those are ideal because you only have to do half of the work, right? Instead of doing both a write out and a read, if it hasn't been modified, you only have to, to read in the new page, right? So that reduces the amount of work to do the page replacement by half, right? So a common modification for clock is to look at both like a use bit and the modify bit um, and to try and find a page whose use bit is zero and, and use modify bit is zero. If you can't find such a page, uh, go back and, and you to search for a page whose use bit is zero, but modify bit is one, right? Or something like that. Our, our textbook talks about, um, um, give, gives an example of, a, um, uh, of that variation where you use a modified bit for the clock policy. Um, so yeah, so make certain that you can do like FIFO or clock or optimal. Um, make certain that you understand the examples about virtual memory uh, where we have like a process in this page table. Um, and you can do things like translate virtual addresses to physical addresses, right? So um, um, the basic idea on that being that um, if I have a page um, that reference virtual address on page five. Uh, if I look at that up in my page table, it might say that page five is in physical frame one. So, so that's the first step of translating. So that, that means that I know that the actual reference has to be on physical frame one if I'm referencing virtual page five, but then you'll also have like an offset. So if physical frame one starts at location 1000 in memory and the offset is to the value 100, you know, 100 uh, bytes from the beginning of the frame, then the actual um, address, uh, you know, for, for, for virtual address page five offset 100 is going to be on physical frame one offset 100. So, you know, you know, whatever the base address is of the physical frame plus the offset is the, the translation for the actual physical address there. So. Our tech, I mean, normally this is done in binary. So we, we would use like a page size of say 10 bits. So that would mean that the page sizes are uh, 1024, right? So 10 bits allows for 1024 uh, different values to be in the page. Um, and, uh, and then normally what you do is like the first, the, 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 the least significant 10 bits would be the um, offset. And then the other bits, bits represent the page that's referenced, right? So we'd, you would use, you would chop off the, the, the 10 bits for the offset and just look at the, the page that's referenced. You would look that, that virtual page reference up in your page table to get the physical frame number. But then those bits, you could just add those to the, you know, uh, append those to the offset bits to get the physical address, right? Um, so um, anyway, you know, there's examples of that. Make sure you understand those in chapter eight, the, uh, the um, translations of, of virtual addresses to physical addresses using the page table and things. Um, all right, so yeah, I'm gonna wrap up. Is that, um, did, did uh, anybody have questions about Things they want to ask about for the test or anything here. Let me see here. Yeah, I don't know everybody. So yeah, if, if you have anything, let me know. So um, 